Hey guys, welcome to Grab, Gather, and Grow. My name is Ben Cathy, and I'm the lead pastor at Hope Church. And I uh, just am so glad you're going to participate in our uh, offering for the next couple of weeks. The series is uh, four weeks long at church, and you can find those if you don't attend Hope Church or if you miss a Sunday, you can find those on YouTube um, by searching, or you can find them at uh, placeofhope.org. And uh, thank you so much. Grab, Gather, Grow is simple, and I hope it is just a, a blessing to you and everybody in your group. We grab the material, we gather some friends, we grow together, and then if we want to add some more Gs, um, we get happy together, we go together to spread the light of Christ in the world. But I just, I just hope it's a healthy uh, learning time for you. So today, the first session is uh, being connected in Christ. And it comes from Ephesians chapter 2. And part of the background of Ephesians is that Paul knew the Ephesians or people in Ephesus really, really well. Uh, in his first, second missionary journey, he visited them briefly, but in his third missionary journey, he actually stayed in Ephesus with the church, helping the church get organized and grow for three years. So this wasn't a short time. So as he's writing, um, hear Paul's heart write to a church that he, he knows. Uh, he probably knows the names of people he's writing to. He probably knows some of their habits. He's probably counseled some of the folks he's writing to in this book. As you go through all the weeks, remember that. But in um, Ephesians chapter 2, the verses we'll be looking at today, um, Paul tells us about being connected in Christ. And he, he makes two, two big claims I want to focus on. The first, first one he says is that through Jesus, because we're connected in Christ, we have access to God. And that's a, that's a pretty huge, and that's like step one. I remember uh, one time I, I gained an interview with the leader of the construction company that built the Peachtree Plaza, the big round building in downtown Atlanta. It was the John Portman uh, was the architect and then the construction company that went with that. And it was one of the most impressive things I've ever participated in. I had to get through three different secretaries to get to this guy. I had an appointment, but I talked to the lady in the lobby first. And she said, oh, sit right here just a second. And the secretary came out. And I really thought she would take me back to his office. And But then I went back to her little area. And she said, oh, sit right here. And then a third lady came and said, oh, come sit right here. Um, the person you're visiting will be ready in just a few minutes. And finally, uh, he stepped out of his office and invited me in. We had a great uh, 30, 45 minute conversation. Uh, it helped me write a paper I was writing. It wasn't a job interview. And um, I've never spoken to him again. They wouldn't give me his cell phone number. They wouldn't give me his email address. Um, and I had to go through those people to get to the big guy. Well, Jesus is our path to the Father. Uh, Jesus is our path because the Father is holy. The Father is perfect. The Father is above anything we can imagine, and Jesus serves as that bridge, that, that doorway, because Jesus frees us from our sin, and Jesus' sacrifice for us makes us holy before a perfect God. And so we're thankful for Jesus. But Paul had in mind uh, being connected with God through Jesus first, but then he had in mind being connected to each other. And I wrote a little something here. I, I said, a healthy church never looks like a tribe. It looks like its community. Paul wanted Ephesus to be in the church and the church to be in Ephesus. And so as we're connected to each other, you, you notice healthy churches don't, don't look like homogeneous clubs. There's different kinds of people, different ages, different backgrounds, different uh, perspectives on the world. There'll be some people who have a very biblical worldview, some people who are new to that worldview who are learning about it. Um, both of those folks may exist in, in the group that you're in today. But 
uh, when we think about the things that were going on in Ephesus, there were Jews and Gentiles. There was a, a cultural hierarchy of people who were wealthy and not wealthy. There were political leaders and people outside of political parties. There were different political leaders. There were different philosophies. Right? Ephesus was a, a pretty busy um, city, maybe, maybe a lot like Atlanta in its diversity. And Paul is saying, you're connected to God through Christ. And you got to be connected to each other because of Christ as well. So uh, we uh, are to to become connected. And today uh, you're invited to talk about that. You know, it seems like our, our culture might mirror Ephesus. We maybe we're even more disconnected from each other than Ephesus. Our uh, the internet, the new technology has allowed us to live right next door to people and not know them but be connected to people uh, somewhere else in the world or in the nation based on our perspective or what we want to be identified with or what we feel like we're victimized by. And Paul calls us, just like he called the people in Ephesus, to be connected to each other, to be family, to serve Christ together. And the words he uses is that we're being put together by Jesus Christ, that we're being built together by Jesus Christ. So he's not finished with us. It's a process, and we're on our way. Hey, I hope today's discussion goes really awesome, and I hope you'll return week after week, and just I hope that this series helps you know more about what it means to be part of the church, how the church functions, and how you fit in the church with other people. Take care. God bless.